it's your girl d welcome back to my channel welcome back to my channel it's your girl d hey what the belly hey <laughs> what's going on everybody it's your girl d and welcome back to another video y'all today i'm gonna be answering some of your guys' questions that y'all been having for me as far as this military lifestyle and being pregnant I'm too damn big to be jumping around like that still. I need to sit down. Okay, anyways, so first question that y'all, actually, before I even get to the questions, my personal experience so far in the military while being pregnant has been way like the most chillest that I thought it was gonna be. Like, this is way more chill than if I were to be working a regular job. In the sense of, I don't have to do like regular PT. Well, now I don't have to go to formation at 06, um, which is usually, I think they do that though because it's all icy in Germany. So they don't want us out there slipping and falling and stuff like that. Um, there's no pregnancy PT where I'm at neither. So we're supposed to be doing like PT on our own. So every day I go to work at nine. So just to start off with, that's great. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'll just get to the questions. Um, got the phone. Okay, so the first question that I was asked is, do they go lighter on you if you're pregnant? In the sense of like, do they not be so rough? Now, I can't speak for any other MOS besides mine because if you're infantry, it may be different. If you're a cook, it may be different. Or even your unit or whatever, it, it would be different. Now with me, I'm supply, so it's already a very chill, laid back MOS. Um, it's not a job where you have to stress or strain. There is times where you have to, you know, go pick up supplies from the SSA and carry boxes and stuff like that. I just don't carry stuff anymore. I'm really like in the office I'm on half days, so. It's very, very chill, not stressful at all. Um, gives me plenty of time to rest, especially right now that I'm so pregnant. I don't sleep really good at night. I'll go to bed at like one, wake up at like four, five, and then like that's it. I'll have to like take a nap throughout the day or something. And it, it sucks, because I wish I could like keep a consistent schedule, but I can't, like it's, it's too hard. So to answer your question, I wouldn't say they go lighter, but they do, they go lighter at least with with my personal experience i'm just speaking for myself so another question that you guys also asked was what is on a pregnancy profile now i've had two i've had two pregnancy profiles since i've been in i've had other prof wait have i ever had another oh no i've never had another profile just pregnancy profile so what's on a, a prof, a, ugh, get it out. What is on a pregnancy profile is basically like your limitations on what you can and can't do right now that you're in the army. So you can't have um, any kind of like combat gear on, no ACH, no IOTV, you can't ride in a tactical vehicle. Ooh. Sorry you guys. Ugh, quiet. Um, tactical vehicles like a LMTV, it's pro I'm probably speaking a foreign language to move that out of the military, but basically any of those uh, vehicles that you see in camouflage, you can't ride in any of those. Um, you're definitely not allowed at the motor pool because if anything happens to you, the military would be liable basically. Um, what else? You can't take an APFT, so you're not going to be doing push-ups, you're not going to be doing sit-ups, can't be doing company runs, battalion runs, running on Mondays and Wednesdays, none of that. You can't, um, I don't know if swimming's on there. I think it is, like if you just want to swim on your own, but I don't think, like at least for the army, I don't think we, it's like a mandatory thing ever to have to do swimming. Um, what else is on my profile? 
once you hit like a certain amount of weeks so i think once i hit 20 20 I don't remember what week it was there was a week I don't know the week so I'm not gonna quote it verbatim but you can't stand at parade rest longer than 10 or 15 minutes um, just because you get lightheaded and stuff this light is very bright I'm gonna have to lower her so I can look in the camera okay guys, I'm gonna put it like this cuz I'm like blinded by that light um, yeah so you can't be at parade rest for longer than 15 minutes um, standing in a formation, there's a regulation for that. You can only be there for a certain amount of time. Mm. Dang, what else? There's a lot of stuff on this profile. Um, there's not on the actual profile that says like once you hit a certain amount of weeks, you go on half days. That depends on like your NCOs and like your job and availability and stuff like that. Um, I got lucky I'm in a unit where I don't have to be there all day because there's so many of us in supply it's crazy but um, I get to be off on like half days it's really it really like being pregnant really starts to wear down in your body once you hit like that third trimester on week 28 29 like you I'm on week 32 now and I like really feel it like it's just tiring and your back is aching it's just way too much so yeah, as far as profiles, that's what's on a pregnancy profile. So the next question that I have is, how long is your leave after you have the baby? Now, this has changed so much over the years for males and females. Um, like the fathers, they get time to, I don't know there, so I'm not even going to talk about them. I'm talking about me as a mom, the mothers. I know we get three months off. It's like 86 six days I believe of maternity leave and that starts from I don't know if it's the day you have the baby or the day you get out of the hospital um, usually you're like in cahoots with your change of command and they you know sign you out when whenever that is um, another question is are you able to breastfeed after you have the baby and you're going back to work so that is Yes, you are allowed to breastfeed after the three months, um, but the difference is you're not going to be taking your baby to work with you breastfeeding the baby. It's going to be like you pump, um, you can leave work, not leave work, but you can take time out of the day from work to pump milk like you're like allowed to do that. That's something that you're allowed to do. And then, you know, put them in storage bags or have them take them to the daycare for the kid or whatever. And yeah, that's basically how it is. Personally, I don't think I'm going to breastfeed longer than three months just because that's just way too much extra stuff for me to do as far as like breastfeeding. Like I might pump and like maybe once or twice a day breastfeed, but like all day, I don't think I'll be able to do it because... You got to think about it. You leave to go to PT at 6 a.m. You're not off until 16.30. So you start at 6 a.m. You're not off until 4.30. And throughout all that time, just having to pump. You got to pump like once every two hours because, you know, it fills up. It's just like a second job. And I just, I'm not I'm too lazy, but I don't want to be responsible for that. I want to be able to be at work be fine and three months I feel like is a decent amount of time for breastfeeding so that's what I'm gonna be doing for my baby girl I don't know how this is even shedding because it's braids but we're not gonna question it okay next question is how do you live in the barracks as a single soldier that's pregnant um so that was me <laughs> I was a single soldier in the barracks eh. okay so with that, I was not able to move out, which sounds so crazy to me. I I know you guys are gonna be like, what? That don't make no sense. But this is just a rule. Um, you're not able to move out of the barracks until you're seven months pregnant. How they expect you to move all your stuff out, I have no idea. Thank God I have my husband. So he was able to take like our my couch out and carry the boxes and stuff. I lived on the third floor, so. Having to do all of that alone at seven months would have been ridiculous. I don't know why they wait till that long when 
I mean, I understand because the first time I was pregnant and they didn't move me in right away, I ended up having a miscarriage. So I see it saves the military money from doing a whole move. But then again, like, oh my God, my phone, I'm sorry guys. But then again, like, um, what I was gonna say. Oh, they don't move you anyways from the barracks to housing. I don't know why, I guess it's just post to post, like PCS, they move your stuff, but they don't move your stuff for like barracks to house. I don't know. Maybe that's just here in Germany. Not sure. But yeah, so you can't move out of the barracks until you're seven months. So hopefully you have some friends or a husband or somebody that'll help you guys or your, your NCO will help you to move your stuff back into your new house. Um, but until then, you're going to be there for seven months, sweetheart. That's just the only downfall. All right, y'all. Next question is, what do you wear? That is going to be a whole video on the military uniform from head to toe as a pregnant soldier so that'll be answered in another video because I don't feel like putting it on and doing all that but there is definitely a maternity uniform so don't worry <laughs> next question is how long do you have until you have to take a PT test after the baby so oh my god guys I get so lightheaded I'm telling you guys oh my god this little girl's like in my lungs okay let me take my time I'm not trying to mess up this video, trying to talk too fast, you know, like I'm going to slow it down because. <sighs> All right. So from the time that you have that baby, whether it was a vaginal or a C-section or I don't know any other types of ways to have a baby besides those two, but whatever way you have this baby, you have six months to take a PT test, like for the record, that's permanent, that's good. Um, you have, I think, a regular vaginal birth. You It takes six weeks to get cleared by the doctor to start working out. Uh, if you have a C-section, I do not know how long you have till you can start training again. This baby. Personally, I don't know if you guys have seen my husband, but my husband is very athletic and the gym is his thing to do like youtube instagram tiktok all that's me gym fitness video games is him so i'm definitely going to be having him train me once i am able and approved to start working out again because this new pt test is no joke and it's all strength it's not this push-up sit up two mile run like you're using muscle you're using different parts just all types of different parts of your body that we're not used to using so it's literally like an a what was it strength ability strength i don't want to sound retarded but it's basically just see like how strong we are so the next question was how do i deal with leaving my child when joining the military the door opened um while joining the military now this is something that I did have to experience. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it, it's very, very hard. Uh, when I left my son, he was one and a half and I was gone for boot camp for two and a half months at Fort Jackson. And then I went to AIT at Fort Lee for another two and a half months so I was gone a total of five months before I saw my son again and it's hard you know but I had him staying with my family and stuff until I was done with training and oops sorry and yeah I mean there's not really more to say with that but what do you do? I mean, you have, if you're single, you have a family care plan. And if you're married with somebody that's dual military, you guys have to get a family care plan too, in case you both get deployed and all that. And I'll make a video about that as well. What is a family care plan? And the final question that I'm going to be answering today is where, I can't even read. 
well, I was gonna say where, but it was what. What happens basically once it's time for you to return back to work? Like, where do the kids go? So there is, oh, why do I have a scat right here? Um, on every base, there is childcare, and it just, it ver the hours are very good because they know that we're soldiers and we're on call all the time. So it just depends on where you're at. Um, I'm not saying they're 24 hours, but they start pretty early at like six, and I don't think they end till like maybe 19, 18, 1900, which is six or seven o'clock p.m. Um, and you request to be put on a waiting list. Usually there's a wait. I know when my daughter's on a waiting list now, so that by the time I have to go back to work in May, because she's due in March, so all of March, all April, all May, by the time I have to go back in June, she'll already be in daycare, so her spot will be ready. Um, sometimes the wait list is up. It could be three months, it could be five months. They're usually pretty good about trying to get people in there quick, but if not, then um, you can always ask uh, other military people's wives. There's a whole bunch of stay-at-home moms or just stay-at-home wives that don't do anything um, in the military, and you can pay them to watch your kid until a spot opens up or if your baby's too little and you're just paranoid about the baby being in daycare. You just have somebody, you know, come to your home and watch the baby for you while you're working. There's just a lot of options. So, yeah, that's what happens with the baby once you have to go back to work. Got to get a babysitter and start cashing out that check for childcare. So, yeah. But, all right, guys, that's all the questions I'm going to go ahead and answer for today. I hope I was able to help some of you pregnant mommies out or some of you people that have kids out. Um, and single soldiers, married soldiers, whatever you are that just, you know, you need a little bit of guidance with this. I know when I got pregnant, I was clueless. I had to do my research and I did the same thing y'all are doing right now. Got my butt on YouTube and asked YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Comment below if there's any other questions that you guys have. I'll be more than happy to answer them down below. But until then, thank you all once again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all next time with the next video. Ah.